Welcome back to Innovation. When last we were here, we were working with our ladybugs and we wanted to make the game a little bit harder. And we created this, the start of a slider that we would be able to change to make our game more difficult. So to finish with that, we have to go in here and create something that when we click our little slider ball we can use that information to change how many bugs are on the screen i'm going to go to fence and click on when this sprite is clicked so when i click the slider ball i want something to happen and i'm going to do this forever now we're actually going to stop the forever loop with a very special block. And I'm going to do a conditional next. Inside the forever loop. The condition I'm going to test is I'm going to test to see if the mouse is down. That means I'm pressing down on the mouse key. I want to set the Y value of my slider and make sure it stays slider location because I don't want the user to be able to drag this little ball all around the screen. I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to set my x value to the mouse value which is under sensing of the screen. So that way when I move my mouse around the screen and drag my slider, the ball's essentially going to follow the mouse. If I'm not having the mouse down, I want to make sure that the Y value still gets set to the slider location. Don't need this part. And I want to stop the script. So that way if I'm not pressing the mouse down, I don't want this script to continue. So I only want the script to continue when I'm holding the mouse down, which means I only want the slider to be set when I'm holding the mouse down. So I'm going to go into here, scroll, find this block that says stop. And I'm going to switch it to stop this script. That will stop my forever loop. Okay, now the real meat of the program, right in here, this little script here. I need to set the slider value. Go to variables, drag in my set block, it right here underneath the mouse. I'm going to set my slider value. And I'm going to choose the value that's on the screen. And I'm going to kind of sort of undo the math that I did over here, that I set the x value. So I'm going to take the current location of the mouse, the x value of the mouse, which I can find under sensing. Put that down here right now so I can build something. And I want to add to it that 235 number. Remember before we subtracted it out? And I want to divide by 20 this time instead of multiplying by 20. So we're undoing all of the operations we did before. in order to get our slide value now to take on the x value. So these two things are going to be linked. Our slider value and our x value will both be linked. Now the only issue with this is when we divide, we might get a number that's a fraction, and we don't really want a fraction. So I'm going to use this block here called rounding, which will round our number up to a whole number, or down to a whole number, depending on whether or not it's above or below a half. I drag this into my correct spot there. So now my slider value is going to match 
the value of the mouse and the mouse value match the value of the slider. Stop. And now you can see when I hit the green flag, bugs move around, but when I move my slider, this slider value changes. Even if I drag it, the button way up here, it still goes back to that, which is what we wanted. So now we have a slider that looks like it goes from about 23 down to zero, which is where we want. When we hit the green flag, it goes right to two, and we want two bugs on the screen, and that's perfect. So now we're going to use this to create the number of bugs that we want on the screen. So you remember that loop that we created in main, that every time our bug was cloned, so in main, we repeated it three times. Now what we're going to do is use our slider value to dictate how many times we're repeating. But we always need to have at least one bug on the screen. So our slider value is going to be two, and our one bug will always be on the screen no matter what. So we have to subtract one from our slider value. So that way we always have at least the two bugs on the screen, one of them being the, the bug that we started with. So I'm going to do a subtraction problem here. Into variables, find slider value. That in there. This is what's going to create. So now, when I run my program, if I move my slider, and then the next time I find a bug, I'll find them. Oh, now you can see I have 11 bugs on the screen, and they're all different colors. And my goal here is to find the correct bug. Now, it's a really small screen, so to make this work a little bit bigger. We can go to full screen. We can use our finger here. See if we can find the one. Nope. Let's see. That one. Oh, this is harder than it looks. See, it gets really hard when we create. Let's try it with this. Oh, I must have found it. Let's try it with this. Let's try four. Down the four. So let's see, I'm going to guess it's this one. Oops. It's this one. Oh, I must have found it. Easier when I'm further away from the board. But I think we'll play with this, and I think we're going to have some fun with this. So the next step in this is to go ahead and add in a scoring system, because we're going to be able to create some scores with this and clean it up a little bit for the end of our. That's all for now. See you next time.